Hi there, everybody. Um, yeah, so today I'm just going to focus on um, water treatment, but pr just to, to set the scene, this is, we were looking at wastewater treatment, and we've, we've come up with a, um, a particular idea, a static um, head powered water treatment, um, originally with the idea for, for mining, um, dealing with, with wastewater from mining. Um, so I've put together this, this presentation and trying to um, include technologies which hopefully will be of interest to, to, to this audience. Um, so just going to go over some of the, the impacts of mining on water, um, set the scene a little bit, uh, and then try and look a little bit openly at the generic benefits of, of, of modular water treatment and, and see how, see hopefully that, how that fits in um, to, to this subject today. Um, go over a little bit about our, our, the concept that we've been working on over the last year, uh, summarised, and then we've, I've got a bit of an idea about how to take it forward, which I've um, got from um, the field of land speed record holders, so um, let's see if uh, that's of interest to you. Um, so a water course pollution from mines, um, oft often in areas which are um, NTDs affect. Um, got some, uh, some photos on the left there. Um, you can see that uh, you've got the, the, the traditional sort of red color, oft often from iron contamination. But there, there's, there's often other metals present. Uh, mercury from, from gold extraction is one, um, which, which gives problems with bioaccumulation. Um, the very first presentation today um, touched, touched on um, the competition for, for, for water resources in Africa. Um, there's, there's one in South Africa at the moment, a mine um, that's, that's, if you like, going through planning, a uh, coal mine, and they're looking at um, abstracting 2.9 megalitres per hour, um, which is quite a lot of water. And, that, and one of the issues they've got there is, is competition for agriculture uh, 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 and mining, essentially. Um, so if you can reuse water, treat it well, that, that would hopefully be a good thing. Um, there's some other figures uh, on, on, on shortage of water uh, predicted there. And um, I looked at Ghana. Um, and, and there, again, it was touched on a little bit earlier, but um, often, often wells are installed as a source of drinking water. Um, what's happening a lot in Ghana, more due to um, uh, un, un, unregulated mining, is you're getting um, contamination of, of those borehole waters, and plants that have been built um, are struggling to deal with, with the contamination that's coming in from the river, so that... Um, if you like, drinking water plants aren't able to treat the wastewater that's now arriving at them, so uh, another problem. So the benefits of, of modular water treatment, um, I, I try to be fairly generic about this, but setting the scene, it, it's the, I define for the purpose of this modular water treatment being something as an alternative to, to big water treatment, so big sewer collection networks, big wastewater treatment plants that you might have in Europe or, or, or the States. Um, when we're looking at um, slum applications or, or, or uh, water treatment in remote mining regions, and um, this infrastructure cost isn't isn't bearable. Um, so, th so the benefits of modular treatment, you'd hope, a, a low capital cost, a, a flexibility of deployment, um, the ability to to bring in water treatment plants at scale for, for possibly seasonal use. Um, but, uh, um, and you do need, um, it's a step above the, the previous presentation, you need the engagement in, in, uh, with the local government um, uh, as a supply chain locally. Um, but does allow uh, water use where not conventionally possible. Um, so then looking at the options that we've got for, for modular water treatment, um, I've tried to list some down here in, in order of complexity that, that might be of interest today. Um, so the most simple thing that you know, you've probably come across uh, is simple dosing, maybe for drinking water with, with chlorine uh, to um, uh, possibly addressing uh, cholera or some kind of biocide. Something that I've come, uh, come across um, uh, are ram pumps, uh, which could be combined with um, uh, dosing. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has come across ram pumps. They're essentially a modern water wheel. There's a company called Papa Pumps that do a... Uh, MDP made ram pump which um, essentially uses the, the energy of a river um, so you put it in the river and it, and it transfers a little bit of water up for storage for agriculture um, and if you had an NTD um, issue you could possibly dose that water at a storage tank and 
and provide a no energy um, solution for providing uh, water. Um, in terms of medium complexity, which is where um, the static head powered water treatment is, is, is probably get, certainly going to start, um, it's some kind of chemical treatment. Um, for mine water, we're looking at pH adjustment. Um, so taking acid mine water, changing the pH with lime or something like that, dropping the metals out and letting clean water go. Um, other options include using balanced ponds, so building lagoons, again using a static head um, and a low power, power, power input. Um, I talked to a chap in South Africa um, <laughs> about uh, mine water treatment and, and, and talking about what we were doing with um, um, pH adjustment and removing metals and, and um, when, when I pointed out that we could do this accurately and that we could drop out the iron, he said that's very nice. Um, if you could leave the tin in, that would be good. And then they would look at processing that separately. So <laughs> it wasn't really why I'd gone to talk to him, but he, he was interested in, in turning essentially a wastewater into something that they could use to recover um, other contaminants essentially. Um, and then at the high end of the uh, complexity scale, we've got multi-stage treatment, possibly incorporating uh, biological treatments um, for anaerobic or aerobic digestion of wastewater, maybe something like you would get in a full-scale municipal water treatment plant. Um, at this end, the expense, expense goes right up. So I've got a picture here of a conventional water treatment plant. Um, and you know, this could be mine water, it could be um, our, uh, our friends in the, in the video just earlier um, with their wastewater. And if you are going to treat it at scale, usually you start off with a pump in, in some kind of source, and then you're pumping water up to um, a number of tanks where you, you're doing things. And this is usually adding chemicals, doing some mixing, doing some aeration, and taking some contaminants out. Um, and in terms of energy use, the biggest uses are the aeration, the pumping, and, and the mixing that you can see. Um, and then the, the, the clean water flows away to the right. And, a good proportion of water treatment plants in the world um, operate along those lines, whether they're mine water or municipal um, treatment plants. Um, the idea of the static head-powered water treatment is to take that conventional chemistry and seal up the process um, so that we can use the, the, head, the head that exists between where the water's coming in on the left to where it's going out on the right to drive that water treatment. Um, so when we think back to those guys who were wheeling their bucket around just earlier, um, there, there was a head available in, 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 in that location when that video panned around and the guy on the bridge you could see that, that the, the blokes had to wheel their barrow down to the, um, down to the river's edge there, tip it out. If you sighted a plant next to that bridge and had a pipe going up the hill with a collection facility for those guys to dump their sludge into, that water would flow down through a sealed system uh, which would be monitored um, and then be treated. Um, and, then, and, then, and then come out clean. Um, still, it, this is in its early days. We're still at a point where energy reductions on the pilot, the, the first pilot that we've done are, are 60%. I'd hope over the longer term that we get down to having a sort of um, local power generation being able to, to um, deliver this kind of treatment. But that's the kind of idea. I hope, hope I've explained that. Uh, makes, does that make sense? Um, so in summary, modular treatment, I'd say, has, has a place for, for um, combating N NTDs and, and, and various types of contaminants. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of costs have come down over, even over the last 10 years, you're aware the availability of the internet has come up. And I'd, I'd hope that that allows delivery of modular systems much more readily than it could have been done even 10 years ago. Electronics costs have gone down. Um, you can, you can hook up the, you know, I've delivered systems for um, uh, contaminated land applications where the whole system's hooked up to the internet and, and, the, and the thing can be put down in, in Kazakhstan and the data of the plant um, fed back so that um, proactive sort of maintenance can, can be done. It comes with a cost um, and you're always going to need that local backup. Um, We'd hope that, you know, hopefully an end game is that over time you, you could standardize um, with modular treatment component parts, um, st standardize those designs, minimize energy, energy usage, and, and put them down where, where, where the impact can be felt best. Um, big difference to conventional plants, 
the, the infrastructure, you know, big concrete pouring operations and um, civil machinery isn't, isn't really required. You do need some transport to get the kit there in the first place, but greatly reduced. Um, so yeah, there, there's lots of in, innovation out there, lots of technologies. Um, probably the biggest problem is, is getting that local engagement and, and the organizational structure to allow this kind of technology to be delivered. Um, on the right-hand side, there's a few pictures there of the pilot that we did of the, this first sort of static head driven water treatment. Um, <laughs> interestingly, the, the, the water at the top is, is um, and it, this is on a mine in Cornwall, the water at the top is actually the water that comes in. It looks pretty clean, um, but it's, it's not. It's got quite a high loading of iron, arsenic, tin, and, and, and copper. And then once it's gone through the um, treatment plant, you could see the bottom picture, that's the sludge that we're taking out um, from that, that water that appears clean at, clean at the top. Um, and, and if that's a, that's a baby plant, really, but if you're looking at sort of mines around in, in South Africa, say, uh, you need plants maybe 50 times bigger, bigger than that for the, for the mining applications. Um, yeah, so I talked about land, land speed records. Um, so I, I visited, um, I don't know if you've heard of the Bloodhound land speed record um, thing. This is, um, um, it's essentially an, an education project. They are, um, attempt, Bloodhound projects attempt to beat the 1,000 miles per hour land speed record, and they're doing it coincidentally in um, South Africa. Um, but the way they're doing it, their business business model, if you like, for this for this project is that they're getting um, Rolls-Royce to contribute a jet engine um, and various other Intel to contribute computers. And, um, and so maybe an idea for, for today is to, um, is to try and deliver some kind of uh, uh, landmark water treatment project, um, but with, uh, if you like, industrial backing and, and solve, uh, I don't know, a target cholera hotspot or something that you guys can, can suggest. So. <laughs> open to ideas, so uh, uh, I think that's the end of my, pro my presentation.